So my class was called Truth, Lies, and Criminal Profiling, Misperceptions of Forensic Psychology in the Media. Um, I really enjoyed teaching the class, and Keisha prompted us with a couple of things to, to talk to you about. One of them was why we were interested in the class in the first place. Uh, and I would say there's a couple of reasons I was interested in the class, one of which has already been mentioned. I, uh, I was concerned about the attrition rate here and wanted to do something to keep students uh, involved and engaged and get them through to graduation. Uh, and that was a concern, so I was happy to be involved in a solution to that problem. Um, but I also think it was a great opportunity for me as an educator. I normally teach these big sections of freshman students, so it'll be 200 uh, freshman students in uh, usually an introduction to psychology classes. And I don't, um, I don't love teaching that many students. You know, it's nice to see all these uh, happy, shiny faces, but I don't get to know very many of them, maybe, you know, a handful. Uh, and those are usually the students that are either struggling or they uh, want to complain about their grade. So that's the only time I see them in my office hours. And I have a very different relationship with my seniors. Uh, I'm very close with my seniors. I know what their career goals are. We talk a lot about their classes and their lives and where they're going to go. And um, that's really the relationship that I wanted to have with my students. So I was excited about the opportunity to get to know the freshmen you know, on a more intimate level, um, where I got to know their dreams and their hopes and um, kind of see them progress through school in that sense, rather than getting seniors that, you know, they've already got a foot out the door, so I don't get to see them very often once they've graduated. Um, I also think it was really appealing to me, this idea of a dream seminar, and you could teach whatever it is that you desire to teach and whatever you were passionate about. Um, one of the things that comes up in my seniors, I teach forensic and legal psychology, um, in the psychology department. It's a senior seminar class, and so we spend a lot of time discussing these issues. And something that persistently comes up in class uh, is this idea of uh, making an argument based on what they've seen on television. Right? So I watched Law and Order last night, and it says that that's not the case. And I said, but the research says this. And um, you know, it's a, it's a frustrating thing to work through as a class. And usually by the end of the semester, I get them all there. Um, but I thought, what a great opportunity this would be to have that discussion earlier on in their college careers about, you know, what type of evidence is legitimate, what's the best type of evidence when you're trying to make an argument, or just have a fundamental understanding of the way the world works. So I was excited uh, to talk to the freshmen about that. Um, so we talked about a number of issues, false confessions, eyewitness memory, eyewitness testimony. Uh, and, and forensic issue, which is uh, my research passion, is trying to understand this problem of wrongful conviction in the United States. And when they go back, because of advances in DNA technology, we can go back now and test these cases of people who claim they're innocent. And lo and behold, there's a large number of them that actually are. And when they do research on that, one of the things that's come up is the second leading cause of wrongful convictions in the United States has been bad forensic evidence. So you have these shows like CSI and NCIS and Bones, and it goes on and on and on, um, that all are really elevating forensic evidence as the best type of evidence you could possibly have when we have a real problem in the United States with this. The FBI just came out recently and said that they basically have been making up uh, evidence for about 20 years uh, and cases that involved hair microscopy. So I think they're important dilemmas we're having in the world, and that's a great way to engage the students in those debates, uh, but also get them to understand the importance of doing research in these areas. Uh, and it was a nice class. I expected to get all psychology students being a psychology faculty, and I didn't. I got a really nice mix, about a third psychology, a third criminal justice, and then a third undeclared or mixed that were just interested in the topic area. Uh, or that like television a lot. <laughs> um, so that was kind of nice for me, I think, as an educator, to see that other perspective. I usually have psychology students, um, so it was nice for me to see people who uh, had chosen careers in criminal justice. They were going to be police officers or attorneys, and they had very different perspectives on the issues. So we had some pretty healthy debates. Um, and in terms of things I enjoyed, I was really shocked at the level um, at which my freshmen were able to participate. I, I felt like I created this pretty complicated course where I gave them a smattering of different experiences I wanted them to have, and I was really nervous that they wouldn't be able to participate in an academic debate, um, or that it might devolve into name calling. I mean, that was an actual concern of mine. Are they going to be able to do this? 
they did a beautiful job. Um, and I, I spent a fair amount of time talking about study skills and strategies, and we spent a lot of time talking about their paper. Um, and by the end of it, uh, they wrote these beautiful papers that would rival the papers my seniors wrote. Um, so I was really pleasantly surprised by that, and I think it, it made me rethink my other classes and how much time I'm devoting in my other classes to talking about how to write a good argument um, and how to contact your instructor and how to take notes effectively. So uh, I think they learned a lot. I know I learned a lot, uh, and I'm really excited to meet this uh, next group of, of students. Uh, oh, the, the trip. You'd ask us to speak about the trip. So my group, I took to a forensic science unit. So we actually got to see uh, the equipment and how they analyzed things. The students got to um, swab some blood off of a t-shirt, so that was kind of fun, and see the, the gelatin molds where the bullet holes had gone through. Um, so that was really fun, and we have some great pictures, if you guys would like them for the website, uh, from that of students holding jello heads, <laughs> swapping blood stains. So.